Well, the title certainly matches the objects in the painting. To all artists struggling to find subject material, consider that Edward Hopper has given prominence to a blank wall. This is not in some white painting by Rochenberg sense, nor in a Mark Rothko sense. Hopper's oil on canvas artwork is representational, with perhaps a touch of surrealism, because the view of the sea seems too close to the real, the water too distant from the shore to look like this directly out of a door. This style is called New Realism. So yes, it is definitely Rooms by the Sea. But like many of Hopper's other painting titles, the obviousness of the title tells us nothing more than what is obvious and doesn't really help us understand the painting at all. His original title was Rooms by the Sea, alias the Jumping Off Place. But he dropped the second part as some thought it was ominous. Whereas I think he meant jumping off into new thoughts, new ideas. For some of us, an uncluttered space allows exactly that. With the simpler title, Rooms by the Sea, we now have no distracting thing to work out. Rather, we have space for us to think through what is going on, to evoke our own thoughts. Classic Hopper. With the title Rooms by the Sea, you might have imagined a little fishing village with a couple of rooms being let near the quay. But it's not a seaside scene with gulls and shoreline and children playing with beach balls or boats and nets and fishermen. It is literally just rooms that are, unexpectedly, next to the sea. That's all you're going to get. Is there a deeper story? Of course. But it will be a projection only of your mood and your thoughts. Your story. For the painting contains no people. The only person in the painting is you, the viewer, peering into an empty space. Some think it therefore evokes loneliness. I'm a bit wary of using that label with any of Hopper's paintings, many of which have solitary figures who may or may not be lonely. Loneliness is a value judgement more readily applied if you're an extrovert and find solitude threatening. But many of us don't. We treasure solitude and draw strength from silent reflection. The life of an artist necessarily involves at least some time on your own, and if you really don't like that, you're less likely to choose the path. But sure, there's always counterexamples. If we substitute a desired solitude instead of an undesired loneliness, we find the painting generating a positive response. A place of clean lines, neat furniture, clear light, fresh air, clearly understandable objects. Peeking around the corner below the framed picture, we see an inviting couch, itself with a view outside a window which is obviously there because of the light streaming in the second room. But if we stop looking at the objects and start looking at the shapes within the painting, the most prominent thing in the whole painting is a simple shaft of light coming in from the right. Its brightness contrasts with a series of darker shapes around it, the sea, the wall, the floor, and even the sky. It is direct sunlight, perfectly contained because it has been created by the shape of the door frame, ended in its journey across the wall and floor by the unseen top of the door frame. The second shaft of light in the next room now fulfills its function as an emphasis of the main shaft, a reminder as we move in our minds into the second room that perhaps it is the light itself that is the painting. Without the shadows, we would not understand the light. There are a few direct shadows, only the bookcase and chair in the second room cast real shadows, but the direct sunlight is so strong that all other interiors become shadow forms. Outside, the dark sea soaks up most of the light, but the regimented waves give us regular reflections. Finally, a distant horizon provides another neat and clear delineation. I imagine Mr Hopper got his ruler out for those edges. All of the action is implied. We don't see the sun, we see the sunlight. We don't see the occupants, just their chairs and bookcase. We don't see art, just a distant indistinct painting intersected by a shaft of sunlight. And we don't see the shore, just the sea and perhaps some shore waves beginning to form. Again, an implied effect. 
What does this painting evoke for you, the only person in it? For me, it is a comforting silence, broken only by the sound of waves and maybe the cry of a gull. It is a defined space, restful in its regularity. Having enjoyed the effect of the direct sunshine on the wall, I might just move into the second room, take up a position on the couch with the sun streaming over my left shoulder, having chosen a book from the facing bookcase. Ah, the serenity, rooms by the sea. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please press like. If you want to be notified when I put out more reactions to great art, please subscribe. See you next time.